सो हेलो अ वेरी गुड इवनिंग टू ऑल वेलकम एवरी वन हाउ आर यू ऑल सो ज्वाइन पास क्विक एवरी वन सो हाउ यू ऑल डूइंग गाइस so hello everyone a very good evening to all so welcome to our next session and in the today session we are going to be discussing any another very important subject that is your design of steel structures right so welcome everyone welcome guys so join fast quick and comment in the chat section and let me know if the audio and video is clear to all quickly comment in the chat section and let me know if the audio and video is clear to all everyone comment in the chat section and let me know guys if the audio and video is clear to everyone yes all right so so let us start guys firstly let me introduce myself quickly and so guys my name is rohan goel and i have a masters degree in structural engineering from iic bangalore i have scored an all india rank of 96 in gate 2020 and these are the subjects that i teach at byju's exam prep everyone welcome to the india's most comprehensive live learning platform that is byju's exam prep and in the today session we are going to be discussing design of steel structures okay so we are going to have a look at we are going to look at some of the very basic questions which are going to refresh your concepts and you are going to enjoy it a lot okay so quickly click on the like button everyone and share the session as much as you can so that uh, more the number of students can connect with ours and enjoy the session and uh, you can also join my telegram group that is civil by rohan goel in this group i will be providing you the pdf in this group i will be providing you the pdf of this class okay in this group i will be providing you the pdf of this class and importantly i will also be start to upload important questions okay concepts any information regarding the exam pdfs and notes i have already provide i will be already providing any doubts for you okay if there is anything that you are having any doubt in your mind and you want me to re resolve your doubt you can also tell me on my telegram group i will go through your uh, comment and i will make the proper resolution for you okay if possible i will also come up with a separate session coming to the first question everyone coming to the first question identify the correct relation with respect to the shape factor for the different shapes in the increasing order so basically you are asked to find out what is the shape factor for these different cross sections tell me everyone what is the shape factor for these different cross sections very good evening so tell me everyone join fast quick everyone and let me know what is the answer guys tell me everyone what is the shape factor for the different cross sections so you are uh, you are expected to remember all the shape factors right so tell me one by one what is the shape factor for this diamond section tell me the answer what is the shape factor for the diamond section what is the shape factor for the diamond section so you are provided four sections okay first is diamond second is triangle third is solid circle and the fourth one is rectangle or square whatever right so the shape factor for diamond section is 2.0 for triangle section is 
for solid circle it is 1.7 and for uh, rectangle it is 1.5 so the increasing order so the uh, increasing order will be 1 3 1 and 2 so the answer is 4 3 1 2 answer is c very good very good very good guys very good welcome so very good guys and uh, next question now this question is a little lengthy question okay i want you to uh, we will do this question in the end okay let us do this question in the end so i will for the for now i will just skip this question i will move on to the next question we are going to do the previous question after at the end okay because it is a little lengthy question okay and i want you to put some good insight into that question so you are given a mild steel flat subjected to a tension force of 84 tons and is connected to the gusset plate using a rivets if the force required to shear a single rivet comma to crush the rivet and to tear the plate per pitch length is 5000 kgs 8000 kgs and 6000 kgs respectively then the number of rivets required is so what are the number of rivets required tell me what are the number of rivets required what are the number of rivets required so tell me guys What are the number of rivets required? So number of rivets required is equal to load divided by rivet value. And rivet value is equal to minimum of shear strength and bearing strength. So shear strength of one bolt is shear strength of one bolt is 5000 kgs. And the bearing strength of one bolt is 8000 kgs. So minimum is 5000 kgs. So the rivet value is 5000 kgs or we can say it as a 5 ton. 5 ton. So the number of bolts required is equal to 84 ton divided by 5 ton. Which is equal to, which is equal to 4.2. No, 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 sorry. Oh, my bad. Okay. okay which is equal to 1 6.8 which is almost 7 17 17 numbers are required so you will round off to the upper value so 17 right clear everyone any doubt okay clear everyone is it clear to all rivet it can be asked in the form of bolts also okay there is no difference rivets and the difference between the rivet and bolt is in the uh, terms of how you uh, subject them to it the side okay how it how they are provided okay the behavior is same okay there is not much difference in the analysis part next question very good a service load permitted on a connection as shown in the figure below in kilonewton is assuming field welding and fe410 steel so you are asked to tell me what is the maximum t force that you can service service load that you can apply upon this system so you are given welds at the top and bottom and another plug weld is given whose dia is 20 mm this is 20, 50 mm okay this is not 58 this is 50 mm so very good question guys a very good question everyone so over here what is the total force that can be taken by the section it will be equal to shear strength of the weld multiplied by the effective area of the weld yes what is the effective area of the weld what is the effective area of the weld so there are two areas this will let us call this as 
this and this has area number one and this we will call this as area number two one and two okay so i will call this as area number one and this i will call it as area number two so effective area a1 plus a2 a1 is equal to you all know l effective into throat thickness which is equal to so you are given l effective will be 50 plus 50 50 plus 50 and throat thickness is so you are given size of the weld as 10 mm 10 mm so throat thickness is equal to 0.7 assuming 90 degree so this is given as 90 degree into size of the weld so it will be 0 0.7 times 10 okay so this is the a1 and similarly a2 for plug weld the area will be area of the uh, cross sectional area of the plug weld that is pi by 4 into 20 whole square so this is a1 this is a2 what is shear strength of the weld fs is equal to fu divided by under root 3 into partial safety factor for weld and partial safety factor for weld in the case of field welding in the case of field welding is 1.5 1.5 so the shear strength of the weld is equal to 410 divided by under root 3 into 1.5 into 1.5 okay now substitute all the values into the formula so t will be equal to 410 divided by under root 3 into 1.5 into 100 multiplied by 0 0.7 multiplied by 10 plus pi by 4 into 20 whole square now this is in newton converted into kilo newton into 10 to the power of minus 3 now solve and tell me what is the value of t you are getting quickly solve and tell me what is the value of t you are getting solve and tell me what is the value of t you are getting yes guys tell me what is the value of t you are getting guys tell me everyone So tell me guys, what is the value of T you are getting? Now what type of value will you get from here? This T the force that you are getting from this expression over here using using this partial safety factor what type of value is this so this is a factored value you should uh, these, these are your factored values you can represent it is by tu the value that you are getting from here is your factored value because we know in limited method of design we you we calculate factored values from factored stresses right we use partial safety factor for material as well as partial safety factor for load so from here you will get it approximately 160 kilo newton right now since this is a factored value and you are asked to calculate what is the service load so service load will be equal to tu divided by 1.5 so you have to divide it by the say partial safety factor for the load which is equal to 160 divided by 1.5 so you will get this value equal to around so 3 by 2 320 by 3 106.67 uh, something so you will get the answer as 105 so the answer is 105 although there is no option available for 160 but if in case one of the options is 160 you would have quickly ticked upon this question and this option and this would have been wrong okay so you have to see you are asked to find out service load okay clear clear guys is it clear to all 
Now, if suppose factor of safety is asked, okay, if in suppose in this particular question, you are asked, what is the factor of safety? What is the factor of safety? So, pay attention. Now, see, what is the factor of safety for material? So, I am taking in general, okay, what is the factor of safety of material? So, it is 1.5, okay, for field welding and factor of safety for load, load, let us call it as F, it, it is equal to again 1.5. So, net factor of safety is equal to 1.5 into 1.5, which is equal to, I guess, 2.25, right? So, net factor of safety is equal to 2.25 over here. Net factor of safety is equal to, so, we are, that is why I, I have told you that these values are factored values, okay? There is a factor of safety for the load as well over here, okay? Clear everyone? Next question. The design bending strength of a laterally supported beam ISLB 350 at 486 Newton per meter, where the design shear force V is less than that of the design shear strength. So, what is the design bending strength of the laterally supported beam? We are provided that the plastic section modulus is given to you and the elastic section modulus is given to you. So, the grade of the steel is also given to you as 410. Tell me. So, for at least you should be studying plastic analysis. Okay. And uh, your connection, both welded and bolted. If in case you have not studied anything, uh, study this much only. Okay. Study this much only. This two, these two, three topics take up to 70% of uh, your questions which, take, which are asked generally. Okay. And if you want to go beyond, you can go with column. That is your compression design, compression member, and flexural. Okay, so these two also you can study. In flexural plate girder, and uh, your roof truss is a small topic. Okay, uh, if you want, you can study that as well. Okay, this also you can study. All right, clear. So over here. So, what is the design, what is the design bending strength guys? What is the design bending strength? This is very simple. Your design bending strength is nothing but the plastic movement capacity, which is equal to Fy into Zp. So, Fy is equal to 250 for Fe415 steel and Zp is also given to you as 850 into 10 to the power of 3. Okay. And this is in uh, Newton mm. So, convert it into kilo Newton meter. 10 to the power of minus 6. So, how much value are you getting from here? So, what value are you will you get from here? So, this will this cancels out. This this cancels out. So, and 3, 4, 5. So, this is divided by 10. Simply. And uh, this is 100 by 4. 850 by 4. Tell me what is the value you are getting? Tell me what value are you getting, guys? So, 212.5 kilo Newton meter. So, the answer is 212.5 kilo Newton meter. Clear everyone? Okay. So, moving on to our uh, previous question, which we have skipped, this one. So, this question is a little big question. So, I have taken it for the last. Okay. All right, everyone, let us start. So, in this question, you are asked to find out what is the collapse load for this particular beam uh, assembly over here. So, the plastic movement capacity of this portion is MP, 2 MP, and for this portion is MP, okay? And you are asked to find out plastic movement capacity. Now, first of all, let us find out what are the number of plastic hinges required. So, there are various questions that could be framed from this question itself. So, first question is, what are the number of plastic hinges required to form collapse, which is equal to DS plus 1. So, DS is your degree of static indeterminacy. Degree of static indeterminacy is equal to number of reactions minus 
नंबर ऑफ इक्विब्रियम इक्वेशन नंबर ऑफ रिएक्शन एट ए सपोर्ट विल बी वन टू थ्री थ्री रिएक्शन एट फिक्स सपोर्ट थ्री रिएक्शन एट दिस फिक्स सपोर्ट सिंस द लोड इज ओनली वर्टिकल सिंस द लोड इज ओनली वर्टिकल वी विल नो दैट द हॉरिजोटल रिएक्शन विल बी इक्वल टू जीरो एट बोथ द लोकेशन सो द हॉरिजोटल रिएक्शन आर नॉट अनोन सो द ओनली नो अनोन रिएक्शन आर वर्टिकल एंड मूवमेंट सो टू ओवर हियर टू ओवर दियर दैट इज फोर एंड नंबर ऑफ इक्विब्रियम इक्वेशन विल बी टू बिकॉज हॉरिजोटल इक्विब्रियम इक्वेशन इज ऑफ नो यूज नाउ सो द डिग्री ऑफ स्टार्टिंग इंटरमेशन इज टू सो हाउ मेनी प्लास्टिक हिंग इज आर रिक्वायर्ड नाउ टू प्लस वन विच इज इक्वल टू थ्री प्लास्टिक हिंग इज आर रिक्वायर्ड नाउ वट आर द प्रोबेबल लोकेशन फॉर द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ दीज प्लास्टिक हिंग इज वेयर आर दीज प्लास्टिक हिंग इज गोइंग टू फॉर्म सो देर आर टू प्लास्टिक हिंग इज कैन फॉर्म एट द फिक्स सपोर्ट one plastic hinge can form at this below the point load and another plastic hinge can form at the uh, where the cross section is changing so there are 1 2 3 4 4 locations at which the plastic hinge may form where will the plastic hinge form it will depend upon the collapse load what collapse load you are getting from the various assemblies so let us understand all the assemblies that are possible okay clear so the first assembly okay let us consider 1 plus 2 plus 3 no let us consider 1 plus 2 plus 4 okay first assembly we will consider this one i will draw the diagram quickly okay so 1 is over here your p load is over here 2 and 3 okay this so over here you will get 2 mp over here you will get mp and over here also you will get mp okay so the principle of virtual work is applied so if this is theta this is also theta okay this is l by 3 so the displacement below the point load will be l by 3 theta and uh, what will be the external work done p l by 3 theta and it should be equal to the internal work done internal work done at this plastic hinge is equal to 2 mp theta at this plastic hinge how much is the internal so this is theta so this will also be theta and if this is theta this will also be theta so it will be mp theta plus theta plus and since over here also mp theta so if you simplify this your theta and theta will cancel out on both the sides that right right and left this will 2 plus 4 plus 5 5 into 3 is 15 so your collapse load will be 15 mp by l so this will be your collapse load from this condition over here this will be your collapse load from this condition now coming to the next condition next condition could be this one so this is your point load so it is possible that the plastic hinge may form at these three locations okay the principle of virtual work is applied this will be like this this is l by 3 this is 2l by 3 so if this is 2l by 3 so this will be 2 theta and this is l by 3 this will be theta okay and uh, over here it is 2 mp this is also 2 mp and this is mp so and below the point load this will be how much l by 3 to theta so applying principle of virtual work p l by 3 to theta should be equal to internal work done 2 mp 2 theta plus over here 2 mp 2 theta plus theta plus and this is mp theta so if you simplify this this will be 4 this will be 6 4 plus 6 10 10 plus 1 11 11 into 3 33 33 by 2 how much 33 by 2 16.5 okay right yeah so p will come out to be equal to 16.5 mp by l so if you compare these two if you compare these two if you compare these two see if you see that this collapse mechanism is forming at a load of 15 mp by l so it is not possible that you, that you that this collapse mechanism will form because it will collapse this mechanism will form at a lesser value okay they, it will never get the chance to reach this particular value because this it has already collapsed at this particular value now let us analyze one more situation okay in this 
this is the collapse mechanism this is l by 3 and uh, since this is l by 2 so this will be l by 6 this is l by 6 this will be theta and this is l by 3 this will be 2 theta okay clear so over here 2 mp this is also 2 mp and this is mp clear so external is equal to internal p l by 3 theta is equal to 2 mp theta plus 2 mp 3 theta plus mp 2 theta which is equal to p will come out to be equal to your collapse mechanical load will come out to be equal to Six, eight, nine, ten, thirty, thirty p by l, thirty mp by l. Sorry, thirty mp by l, which is again very, which is again greater than this also. Okay, clear, clear, everyone. So <clears throat> from here the collapse load is coming out to be equal to fifteen mp by l. So the answer is fifteen mp by l. Okay, so the right answer to this question is 15 MP by L and the collapse mechanism to which it is corresponding it is 1 plus 3 plus 4. Okay, so this is the collapse load. So from here, uh, different type of questions can be asked. Okay, from this particular question itself. Okay, some so small question may be asked, some conceptual question may be asked. Okay, and the PDF is going to be provided to you on my Telegram channel. Okay, with this, we wind up our session. If you like the session, click on the like button and do subscribe to the Baiju's exam prep channel, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye and take care. Any doubts in, at the end? You want to ask anything at the end, guys? Any doubt, guys? Yes, everyone. So thank you everyone, goodbye and take care.